Now, let me discuss the various parts of the nephron and the mechanism of action of diuretics on different parts of the nephron. So, you take this as the Bowman's capsule of the nephron and then we have the proximal convoluted tubule and this will further continue as the descending limb of loop of Henle right this will further continue as descending limb of loop of Henle and this will be your hairpin bend and this is the thin ascending limb of loop of Henle and then again you have the thick ascending limb of loop of Henle right so this is the thin ascending limb of loop of Henle whereas this is the thick ascending limb of loop of Henle now after this particular loop of Henle that is the thick ascending limb of loop of Henle the other structure what we have is the distal convoluted tubule and as well as the collecting duct right so this will be your Bowman's capsule this will be the proximal convoluted tubule this is the descending limb of loop of Henle and this will be hairpin bend and this will be the thin ascending limb of loop of Henle thick ascending limb of loop of Henle and this will be the distal convoluted tubule and this will be the collecting duct now out of this remember this entire structure that is the PCT the distal convoluted tubule will be the part of your cortex whereas the loop of Henle and as well as the collecting tubules will be the part of your medulla right so certain structures of the nephron they are present in the cortex of the kidney and certain structures of the nephron they are present in the medulla of the kidney now you take this particular diuretics diuretics they mainly exert their effect by inhibition of renal tubular reabsorption of sodium and water right what does this diuretics do diuretics they will exert their action by inhibiting the sodium and water reabsorption from the various parts of the nephron so diuretics mainly they exert their effort or they exert their effect by inhibition of the renal tubular reabsorption of sodium and water at different parts of the nephron now these diuretics these may be classified according to their efficacy according to their efficacy they are classified into high ceiling diuretics and the second they are classified into what is called medium ceiling diuretics and the third they are classified into what is called the low ceiling diuretics right third they are classified into what is called low ceiling diuretics you take this high now what do you mean by this high ceiling medium ceiling and as well as low ceiling diuretics remember depending upon the capacity of the diuretic to excrete the sodium they are further classified right depending upon the capacity of the diuretic to excrete the sodium they are classified into high ceiling medium ceiling and as well as low ceiling that means you take high ceiling diuretics high ceiling diuretics they will excrete the large quantity of the sodium that is the reason why they are having high efficacy whereas medium ceiling the excretion of the sodium is comparatively less compared to that of the high ceiling whereas the low ceiling diuretics compared to the medium ceiling the sodium excretion still less so that is why they are called as the low ceiling diuretics now you take this high ceiling diuretics now what are the examples of your high ceiling diuretics high ceiling diuretics they include the loop diuretics 
एंड ऑस्मोटिक डायोरिटिक्स राइट द हाई सीलिंग डायोरिटिक्स दे इंक्लूड द लूप डायोरिटिक्स एंड एज वेल एज द ऑस्मोटिक डायोरिटिक्स नेक्स्ट कमिंग टू द मीडियम सीलिंग डायोरिटिक्स your medium ceiling diuretics they are thiazide diuretics they are thiazide diuretics so thiazides they are the medium ceiling diuretics whereas you take the low ceiling diuretics the low ceiling diuretics they are carbonic anhydrase inhibitors right they are the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors and the next one is the potassium sparing diuretics next is the potassium sparing diuretics so these are your low ceiling diuretics so the high ceiling diuretics are the loop diuretics and osmotic diuretics the medium ceiling diuretics are your thiazide diuretics and low ceiling diuretics are the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors and as well as the potassium sparing diuretics now this particular high ceiling medium ceiling low ceiling they are classified based on what is the quantity of the sodium which is being excreted by these particular diuretics now in this various parts of the nephron let me tell you what is the percentage of B sodium which is being absorbed at the different parts of the nephron now for example you consider 100% of sodium 100% of sodium is filtered from glomerulus to the bowman's capsule the maximum amount of sodium absorption will occur in the pct that is nearly around 67% of sodium is being absorbed at the level of proximal convoluted tubule now remember the further sodium absorption will occur in the thick ascending limb of loop of henle so in the thick ascending limb of loop of henle nearly around 25% of the sodium is being reabsorbed whereas in the dct the amount of sodium reabsorbed is 5% and as well as you take in the collecting duct the amount of the sodium which is being reabsorbed is 3% so the highest sodium absorption is occurring at the level of pct the lowest sodium absorption is occurring at the collecting duct and how much amount of the sodium is excreted less than 1% of the sodium is excreted in a normal individual right less than 1% of the sodium is excreted in a normal individual now when you give diuretics what these diuretics will do diuretics either they will increase the volume of the urine or they will also increase the amount of the sodium excretion so they will inhibit the sodium reabsorption which is taking place at the various levels of the tubules so these particular diuretics right these particular diuretics what they will try to do these diuretics they will inhibit the sodium absorption at the various levels of the tubules and they will increase the sodium excretion so along with sodium excretion that is whenever the process of natriuresis is taking place the water is also being taken along with the sodium and thereby the individual's fluid overload will be reduced so this is what the diuretics are doing in our body